Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com and in this video we are going to set up our tank factory for generating our tanks onto our map. It's just going to be one script that's handling all of this, but there's a lot to it, so let's dive right in. First, we're going to go ahead and right click on the scripts folder in the root of our project. And I'm going to say create folder. And I'm going to name this folder tank factory. Perfect. And then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to create a C sharp script and name it tank factory as well. And then we'll double click on this to go into it. So double click on the tank factory script. We're going to go ahead and get rid of these comments. And we'll get rid of the update function as well, because we're not going to need that. So make some room up at the top for a few variables. And we're going to add a couple of serialized fields. And the first one is going to be private float spawn rate. And we're going to set that to 3.0F by default. This is going to be how many seconds in between each tank spawning there are going to be. And then we're going to add another serialized field. And that's going to be private float spawn radius. And let's set a default of 0 0.5. Let's go with 0 0.6F. One more serialized field. And we're going to call this private float spawn height. And we're going to set that to 10.0F as a default. And then one last one. So serialized field. Private float. Oh, sorry, not a float. Game object. And this is going to be our spawn object. Now that we've got those declared, let's go ahead and use the awake function. And this is something we should have been doing with the other classes as well, but we can go back and take care of that in a minute. And we're going to do a check and say assert dot is not null spawn object, because we really don't want this object to be empty if we're trying to use it. And so we definitely want to make sure that an error is thrown. Next, we're going to need to create a function. It's going to be a coroutine. So let's call it private I enumerator spawn enemy. And as you may have guessed, this function is going to spawn an enemy for us. First, we're going to say yield return new wait four seconds. And we're going to pass in the spawn rate because we're going to want to wait when the game starts up because we don't want enemies spawning right away. We want to give the player a couple of seconds to get adjusted and oriented in the world. So now that we've waited for those seconds, we're going to say while true. And then we're going to instantiate a game object. So instantiate spawn object. And then for its position, we're going to do something special. So we're going to leave that empty for now. And we're going to move on to the last parameter. And we're just going to say spawn object dot transform dot rotation to get its natural rotation the way it should be, according to the prefab. So add a space back in there. And then we're just going to yield, return new, wait for seconds, spawn rate. There we go. Just like we did above. Now, for this value here that we left empty, we're getting an error because it wants a location. It wants a vector 3. And we're going to provide that, but we also want it to be randomized. So to get that vector 3, we're going to add one more function. We're going to say, private vector three, get random position. And here we're going to kind of decide where we want our player to be. So an important thing to note is we've got a couple of op options for spawning our characters. 
Mapbox even provides us with this awesome script called Spawn on Map. And what that would do for us is we could pass it an actual physical longitude and latitude, and it would spawn whatever we were trying to instantiate at that point in the world and reflect it in our game world. But that's not really what we're going for here. Um, you may want to implement that in your own version of this. But for right now, we're just going to decide on an, on an arbitrary position in the game world for our spawned tank. Now, determining where to put our player is going to be really complicated, and it's going to require a lot of focus and attention to detail. So let's get into that. We're going to say vector3 random position or random pause equals random dot inside unit sphere times spawn radius plus transform dot position. So that was part one of the super tricky secret method to get this done. Part two is we say vector three new pause equals new vector three random pause dot x transform dot position dot y plus spawn height and we're going to go ahead and break this up since it's going to be a little big to see on the screen yeah i get it there's an unexpected token deal with it and then we're going to say random pause dot z and that's it that's all there is to it so i'm going to scoot this over so it looks a little nicer and then all we're going to do is return new position now how is all of this working well it's actually pretty simple so we're generating a random position and that's inside of the unit sphere, which is the vector 3D version of inside unit circle. And so essentially we're picking out a random spot in a sphere times the spawn radius. The sphere by default has a radius of one. So multiplying that by the spawn radius is gonna give it whatever size we desire. And then we're adding the transform dot position just to make sure that we're in the right area. And then once we've done that, we're grabbing the random positions x and its z values, and we're creating a new vector 3 with them while taking the transform positions.y plus the spawn height. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to raise up whatever we're spawning and drop it down onto the map and make sure that it's above where the map's baseline is by going off the position of whatever we're spawning this with. Pretty simple, right? So we're going to go back up to spawn enemy. And in the middle of this instantiate call, we're just going to say get random position. And I'll break this function up so you can see it better. Now it's going to spawn enemies at a regular interval at this random position and with their proper rotation. All that's left is we go up to the start function and we're going to say start coroutine. And we're going to pass in spawn enemy. So let's save that. And we're going to go back to Unity. And back in Unity, we've got our script now. And we can assign this to anything we like. So just to see if this is working, let's go ahead and create. Actually, you know what? Let's just drag it onto the ground. Let's do that. So I'm going to click on ground. And then I'm going to drag the tank factory over onto it here in our debug land scene. Now, this should be the center, and it should be going off of about, what did we decide? Like 0.6. So somewhere in this area, it should be dropping tanks. But first, we need to give it a prefab so it knows what it's supposed to be spawning. So let's grab enemy tank, drag that into the spawn object section of the inspector for the ground in our tank factory script. And let's press play and see what happens. Okay, so we had an enemy tank spawn. The question is, 
Where is it? It is way up here. And I feel like maybe that's just a little too high. Because it's dropping pretty fast. So why don't we drop down this spawn height on our grounds tank factory script. And let's see what happens when we drop down to, mm, I don't know, maybe three. Let's try three. And we're going to drop this spawn rate down to one, just so it spawns faster, so we've got quicker results to look at. Look at. Okay. So that's still a little high. Still kind of really high. So let's drop this down even further. Let's pause. Change the spawn height to one. Cool. And now you'll notice it solved a bit of a problem where they were passing through our ground because they were moving way too fast. But we've got an army of tanks assembling here around this radius. And they're all going to shoot different colored balls and just grow and grow and grow. How cool is that? Now we know we can take our script and let's go ahead and update these values. So I guess just the spawn height. Let's change that back to one the way that we had it. And just so we don't forget for later on, let's go change the default as well. So let's head back into the tank factory script, go up here to our spawn rate and update that to one. Now back to Unity. And we now have a fully functional tank factory. And what that's going to allow us to do is, like we saw with the ground, we can attach that to anything. And it's just going to pop out tanks for us at whatever speed we desire. Pretty great, right? With that, we're going to call this video good. We've actually made a lot of progress here, even if it doesn't feel like it. Because now we can take this script, attach it to our AR world, and we'll have tanks popping out, which is pretty awesome. So let's save, and then we're going to head up to collab. And I'm just going to say added tank factory. Let's publish now, and it's going to upload, and we're up to date. Perfect. Great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.